Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays and Vlogtober Day 25 and take two of this video because I already recorded it and it was just not working. The camera wasn't working, the microphone wasn't working, so hopefully everything is fixed now. I am facing a different direction. You're sort of on the backside of my usual bookcase and filming setup because it is so dark to hear today, rainy which I completely love, but it did make my camera want to focus on my background and not on me. So we move over to this side and I have the direct light out of the sunlight streaming onto me. So hopefully everything is good now. But anyway, Vlogtober Day 25, I wanted to talk a little bit about Samhain lore and traditions and how they led to some of the Halloween traditions that we have today and how you can use those to celebrate in your Sabbath or just general Halloween celebrations this year. If this is your first video, then let's talk a little bit about Samhain. And if you need even more information, do check out the podcast. We have a couple of Samhain episodes there. And I also have the Samhain ebook available on Patreon. Patreon's just five bucks a month. And the ebook is out and it is about 20 pages. It has history, recipes, spells, tarot, all kinds of things in there to check out to help you celebrate this season. Samhain is our third and final harvest festival, starting with Lamas and then Maybon, and now we have Samhain. It is one of the four Celtic fire festivals. So the concept of the Wheel of the Year and the Eight Sabbaths is a Wiccan idea, and it is based off of four Celtic Sabbaths and four Germanic Sabbaths. So some witches don't celebrate all eight of them. Some will not celebrate any of them. Some will only do four out of the eight, completely up to you but we are coming up on this Celtic fire festival. If you are in the Northern hemisphere, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, this is the time where you would be celebrating Beltane instead. Because these Sabbaths are based on our ancient ancestors' agricultural cycles in the Northern hemisphere. So at Samhain, we're looking at having everything in harvested to start preserving and getting ready for the very harsh winter months that are about to be coming up. So it's a much more quiet time of year. It is also said that this is the time when the veil is thin and spirits can roam our realm more easily. That is where the first Halloween tradition comes from and that is the tradition of wearing costumes. The spirit realm, since it was open, easier to pass through, it is not just our benevolent ancestors that are coming to visit, it's also trickster spirits. So in order to avoid these trickster spirits, the best way to slip through undetected is to go around dressing as one of them. So that's where costumes started. It's the idea to dress up as these spirits to blend in so you wouldn't instead be a target. Obviously these costumes have evolved quite a bit into what we have today for very secular Halloween costumes, but that is where they originated. We also have the origins of trick-or-treating. There are a couple of practices for this. There is the idea of mumming, and mumming is going to door to door dressed up and performing a small play or scene in exchange for food and drink. And there's also the Christian idea of souling where they would go around on October 31st from door to door and offer a prayer or a song for the deceased loved ones of that house in exchange for what was called a soul cake. So it was the less fortunate members of that society that would go around to their neighbors who maybe had a better harvest or were better, more well off and offer up that song prayer performance in exchange for some food. Obviously quite a few steps to get to the trick-or-treating that we have today, but that is where that tradition started, which is always so interesting to me because there are a lot of religions that are very against Halloween and see it as like a devil's holiday, which is worshiping devils, um, which is just not true because the devil is a Christian construct from the Christian Bible. So if you don't believe in the Christian Bible, you don't believe in the devil. But it's just interesting that that whole idea of trick-or-treating has origins in the idea of Christian souling. So just one of the many traditions and contradictions. Uh, more come up at Christmas. I'm sure I will have like a whole video on that, but uh, that is always my favorite when the Christians are like, oh, we're not going to celebrate Halloween because it's a pagan holiday. I'm like, you do literally nothing for Christmas and Easter that does not have pagan origins. Like every single, every single thing comes from pagan traditions. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so I think we had a whole podcast episode on that too. Uh, Christmas is my favorite one to do, do that for, but Christmas, Easter, those are big ones. I'm sure I will have an upcoming video about that too. And the last one is the tradition of the jack-o'-lantern. This, I will link the Wikipedia article below because there are a few origin stories, but they are all about Stingy Jack or Jack of the Lantern. 
the one that the story that I'm most familiar with is that there was a man named Jack and the devil came to collect his soul and told him it's time to go. And he said, okay, I will go with you to the underworld, except I want to have another beer. So come to the bar with me. Let's go get a few more beers and then I'll go with you. So the devil agreed. They had their beers, but Jack did not have any money. So he asked the devil to transfigure himself into a coin that he'd pay with the coin and then the devil can transfigure back and they can be on their way to the underworld. So the devil did, but as soon as he transfigured himself into that coin, Jack slipped him into his pocket where he also had a cross. And since the devil and that coin form was next to the cross, he couldn't transform back into the devil. So Jack made him another deal and said, if you, if I let you out of here, you can transform back, but you cannot collect me for many more years. I want to stay here on earth. And so the devil reluctantly agreed. When Jack finally did die, he tried going up to heaven and God was like, nope, you were kind of a trickster, not very good in life. We don't want you up here. And so he went back down to the devil and the devil was like, no, I'm still mad at you. I am holding a grudge. I don't want you here either. So instead you are going to be doomed to walk the earth for all eternity. And as he was leaving to go back to earth, the devil flicked a burning coal at him and Jack caught it and put it into a hollowed out turnip to guide his way as he spent his eternity wandering earth. And that is where the idea of jack-o'-lanterns come from, was to hollow out a turnip. Turnips were the vegetable preferred back then and soon became pumpkins, especially when the immigrants came to America because pumpkins were more plentiful here in America than they were in Ireland. And the idea was to light the candle inside that hollowed out turnip to protect your home from Jack's wandering spirit. And that is something that you can still do today. A lot of people carve jack-o'-lanterns. The most comic, common and iconic uh, shape to put into a jack-o'-lantern is the face, but you don't have to do the face. You could absolutely do a sigil. You can do a witch's symbol, maybe the moon phases, completely up to you. You can also just paint them if you're not much of a carver. And um, in that case, you would just set the candle in front of it. And then you would put your candles inside, light those, and have your house protected on Halloween from Jack's wandering spirit and any other spirits that are around. One of the spells that I wanted to share in particular comes from Ellen Dugan's book, Seasons of Witchery. This is a fun one. And she specifically has a little charm to say when you are lighting your jack-o'-lanterns. See this pumpkin all glowing gold? Protection for my home it holds. Frighten off evil and turn back negativity. The spell is cast by the magic of All Hallows Eve. The wheel year spins on and I celebrate this time. I seal up this Samhain spell with a simple rhyme. Sweet, simple, to the point, and offers great home protection. I know we talked about home protection yesterday, but this is very specific to this season, this holiday. So if you are already going to be carving pumpkins and putting jack-o'-lanterns out, then that is a really easy charm enchantment to place on those and have your home protected. I also think it is a great time of year to contact witch ancestors. So these could be witches that you actually knew in your family line that used to practice, but it could just be witch ancestors way back in your family line that you don't even know that they practiced. You, they're sort of that unknown dead where you don't know their names, or it could just be the community of witches in general that you are reaching out to. A lot of witches felt that pressure, especially historically, of not having anyone, feeling very alone, very persecuted, and this is a great time to connect with them, especially if you are feeling lonely in your craft and it needs some guidance and support going into this witch's new year. You can take a pumpkin and a turnip and place those on your Samhain altar, and in front of those place a white candle and a black candle with some incense in the middle, light your incense, light the candles, and spend some time there contacting those witch ancestors and just letting them know that you are there. Thank them for sort of paving the way and doing all of the work that they did to make witchcraft a little more acceptable as it is now, not everywhere, but a lot of places. And asking them for any guidance and support that they can offer going into the new year. You will find that witch ancestors are very open to this because again, they felt that very much throughout their lives and their practice. So it's a perfect time to reach out to them. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick Vlogtober day 25. I love history. I love seeing where all of these traditions came from and why we sort of do the things we do today, especially for secular holidays like Halloween. I find all of that so interesting. I hope that you do too. 
and do let me know in the comments what you are going to be doing for Samhain or Halloween if you will be trying out any sort of jack-o'-lantern spells I would love to hear it and that's everything that I have for vlogtober day 25 I will see you in the next one